Protecting Personnel Personal radiation monitoring devices are required if an individual will receive more than one quarter of the occupational dose limit at any time during employment. These requirements are for any employee, and requirements may differ for technologists operating fluoroscopic equipment. Basic monitoring requires a dosimeter to be worn at collar level outside any protective lead apron or thyroid shield. They should only be worn when on the job since they measure occupational exposure. In other words, exposure received in the course of employment. Individuals are not considered members of the public during any period in which an occupational dose is received. It should be noted that pregnant radiographers are not required to, but are encouraged to wear an additional second monitor at waist level underneath the lead apron to estimate fetal dose. We'll cover more on this later in the course. Characteristics. Monitors should be lightweight and easy to carry. They're made of materials durable enough to tolerate normal daily use. They're able to detect and record both small and large exposures in a consistent and reliable manner. Outside influences should not affect the performance of the instrument. They should be reasonably inexpensive to purchase and maintain and permit healthcare facilities to use large numbers of monitors in a cost-effective manner. Extremity dosimeters, like the ring seen in the picture here, are typically worn by nuclear medicine personnel who are hand-injecting radioisotopes and working in a hot lab where the extremities receive the most exposure. OSL and TLD monitors provided by professional radiation monitoring services are recommended. Personnel monitoring reports are legal records of exposure, providing information about the type and energy of the incident radiation. These reports are needed to document how much ionizing radiation employees have been exposed to and must be made available by employers to all personnel at the end of each specific monitoring period. The maximum allowable monitoring period is one quarter, or three months. When a radiographer changes jobs, a copy of any previous employer's cumulative reports should be passed along to the new employer. This is ultimately the responsibility of the radiographer. Reports should include the following. Proper full identification. The current period dose the cumulative quarterly dose, the cumulative annual dose, the cumulative total exposure for the duration of service, meaning employment, and the unused portion of the cumulative lifetime dose limit. Looking at the example here, the reported doses of M or N are sometimes reported. These respectively stand for minimal dose or negligible dose. This means that the employee received the exposure in a range less than the statistical error for the dosimeter. For an OSL monitor, that's less than 10 microsieverts. For a TLD, that's less than 50 microsieverts. And as you can see in this image, which is a report taken from the United States, where standard units of milliram are used. All personnel operating in fluoroscopy or in the immediate area will be required to wear personnel monitoring dosimeter above the apron at collar level. When considering who should be monitored with fluoroscopy, any individual who is likely to receive 10% of the dose limit or anyone who operates the fluoroscopic equipment. The reading provided is to be considered a whole body dose. People who operate mobile equipment and or enter the high radiation areas must be monitored regardless of the exposure levels they are likely to receive. Any dosimetry reports exceeding the dose limit must be reported to the California Radiologic Health Branch, the RHB. In addition, if any occupational worker receives an exposure of 50 millisieverts or 5 rems, to the skin as a whole body dose, the state must be notified within 24 hours. 
If an occupational worker receives an exposure of 20 millisieverts, or 2 rems, in a quarter, the state must be notified within 30 days. All dosimetry reports shall be preserved indefinitely.